I remember when I started medicine, and it was back in the 70s, um, literally it was about one out of 30 people got cancer. Now it's one out of two, and the experts predict it's going to be about one out of one within 25 years because our environmental impacts are so strong. Our air is so contaminated, homes are outsourcing gases, we're getting uh, contaminations in our food. How about autism? People are hearing about oh, that a lot. Yeah, you know, it was interesting because I remember going through probably 20 years of my career and almost never seeing an autistic child. And to see a child with ADHD would be maybe one in a school, and then later it came down to one in a classroom. And now, I mean, you're looking at what is it uh, about? What is it about one out of 150? autism and in California it's about one out of 50 so that really shows an environmental link and so it's really tragic that we're seeing these diseases escalate we're seeing them become younger and younger and younger because if you think about it the the philosophy is is you're born well and at least that's the theory you're born well and then you grow up and you get ill based on you know some lifestyle choices or environmental impacts or maybe a little genetic link but what we're actually seeing is that the fetus is not actually getting the full nutrients and all it's actually getting a lot of the toxicities because um, our environment is worse and so we're actually seeing children born less well and so it's no wonder that by two years old they're being diagnosed with autism uh, or having ADHD and it's no wonder that we're seeing asthma now in preteens and we're seeing diabetes in preteens and it's actually um, predicted that many children will die before their parents now. So we're not we're not making in, any inroads in medicine in that way. I mean, our role in medicine is to stop the downward progression when you come through the door with your problem. But again, the missing piece has always been what path should you be on or could we put you on that would actually uh, allow you to rise up and reverse that. So when I bumped into this company, Nikon, I just went, this is the most brilliant thing I've ever seen. Because people have a tough time making change, and they'd come to me and tell me, I have diabetes, what do I do now? And I'd say, you need to eat better. But I couldn't tell them where to go do that. Or I'd say, you're dehydrated and you're not drinking enough. And I didn't know how to tell them how to take that change. Um, or somebody might be uh, having trouble with their weight, and they can't keep it off. And it might be because they're not sleeping. They're showing um, that's linked to poor sleep and eating and problems with the food. And now I have one path. It's the wellness home. You put them on it and people start to feel better. They start to have a path to run on. It's simple. They don't have to change. They change the environment in their home. And so it's very, very easy for people to do. And what's interesting um, is I was actually, I actually entered um, the elevator one day. I was at a big convention and actually there were multiple conventions going on. And there was a convention of orthopedic surgeons. And I'd been watching a million around for a while, and I was thinking, boy, I'd really like to talk to one of them <laughs> about these technologies because I know what they can do. And, uh, and I was actually dressed up because I was supposed to do a, an event that night, and I got into the elevator, and the orthopedic surgeon said, boy, you're all dressed up. What are you here doing? And I said, well, what's interesting is I'm a registered nurse by trade, and he smiled, and I said, but now what I do is I do wellness. I help people not get sick. Or if uh, you've got patients that you're challenged with, I can help actually help them turn around and get better quicker. And he said, boy, I sure hope you don't do your job very well. <laughs> he goes, that could put me out of business. Or He says, it's already hard enough for me to make um, my payments with how tight things are getting with HMOs and people dictating what I can do for my patients. And, and if you start doing your job really well, it's really going to put another big hurt on the medical society. And I said, I disagree. I said, you actually want me to do my job very, very well. And that caught his attention. He goes, what do you mean by that? And I said, why did you get into medicine? And he said, I got into medicine to help people. I got into medicine to make a difference. And I said, and that's been capped on you, hasn't it? And you're not being able to do what you need to do. And I said, is that not because, number one, you're being overburdened with an am amazing amount of people entering the medical system that should have been prevented in the first place. And you're being bogged down with a system that's going to break. And I said, boy, isn't that the case? And I said, wouldn't you predict in the next 10 years our system's going to go bankrupt? And he said, I agree. We're going, we're going down very quickly. And I said, so if I could take the people that shouldn't have gotten sick in the first place and put them on a wellness path and showed them and empowered them a way to stay 
unbroken and unburdened the amount that's hitting your doorstep, wouldn't that put you back to doing what you did and started 20 years ago, which is working with the ones that got in the traumas or had a genetic defect or actually needed a medical intervention because of something that went wrong? And I could actually free you up to go back to practicing in medicine the way it should be. And in the same time, if we could empower people to have a path that could turn around these younger and younger statistics on poor health, wouldn't we also then unburden the insurance company that's having to pay out huge amounts of money that they can't afford and it's bankrupting our insurance companies, which is why they're making your HMOs so tighter, your money's drying up. I said, I could actually help that company as well. I said, it would turn it around and get it back to where it was 20 years ago or 30 years ago when it was effective. And by the time we got to the 16th floor, because this conversation went on almost as rapidly as this, with quite a crowded elevator, um, the door opened and he looks at me and he said, wow, I hope you do your job very, very well. And he walked out of the elevator and then he stepped back and he reached in and shook my hand. And he says, I really hope you do your job very well. And it was interesting because after that, I had a lady come up to me who happened to be in the elevator and she said, wow, we need to talk. I'm an insurance agent. And she says, I own my own business. And it's getting tighter and tighter. She says, I don't like putting limits on physician care or payouts. But if I don't, we're going to be bankrupt. We're following right behind the medical system to bankruptcy. And she said, and I'm a business. I need to make a profit, but I'm finding very little profit left without stress. And she said, I like your preventative approach. If I could figure out how to insure people and tell them how to use one of the insurances is actually assurance by getting on a wellness path, I'd like to join you in business. So. That's uh, that. It was pretty neat. <laughs> now, you had someone else that was threatened by what they were doing. That they actually came to their employee. And oh gosh, yes. Well, a lot of times I get to people. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. I meet a lot of people in my travels and one of the things that I like to do is listen to people and see where they are in their life and what their frustrations um, are. And there's a lot of people today that I'll say climbed a path and thought they were climbing a noble path and when they got to the top they feel like they climbed the wrong ladder but they're so far up they, they, um, they're stuck. Um, and so I was actually up in uh, Canada and we were at a, uh, I'll call it a self-development workshop. And we were supposed to get up on stage and share something of passion inside of us that, um, that we wanted to share with that wasn't fitting with us anymore, that we wanted to, to walk away from. And so this physician, she's actually a pain management specialist, one of the top in the nation from Texas, um, got up on stage and she actually said, I got into medicine to help people. And she actually quoted the Hippocratic Oath. And she said, I picked pain management um, and I'm a top anesthesia. And she actually even uh, became certified in acupuncture to have other modalities to help her patients. And she said, I got into this because I thought I was going to help people. And what I found out is I really wasn't helping them. In fact, all I had in my little tool chest to help them was putting them on drugs and pro probable or possible addiction, going for surgery, and uh, with no permanent correctable outcome from that, you know, sometimes the outcome wasn't good, um, permanent steroids for the rest of her life, and she was, I was running out of options. And she said, finally, I realized I wasn't doing the Hippocratic Oath, thou shall do no harm. And so she made an announcement from stage that she didn't want to do this anymore. So um, my girlfriend and I, we approached her and said, we're both nurses, and we heard what you said, and would you, what would you do if you could really go back to your dream about doing what you wanted to do? And she said, I would get into wellness. And she said, I'd open up a center, and we said, Better yet, how about um, opening up a center that's not limited? Um, and she took a look at Nikan and she actually joined our team. Now what was interesting is that she was so um, enthralled with the product technologies, because remember, she worked with some of the tough pain management patients uh, ever. She got some of the worst ones come to her. She started incorporating them on her patients and having fabulous results. And she was so excited because it didn't have any side effects. I mean, she's like, all these other things I do have massive side effects are incredibly expensive. And she goes, and here are low cost products that have no side effects and these are wonderful. Well, what happened was after a while, her hospital caught on and said, wait a minute, you're going to lower our profitability. First of all, you're curing, well not curing people, but you're sending people out the door with results and that means they won't come back. And second of all, we're not making money from it. So she actually said, well, I'll, I'll run it through the center. You can, you can earn money. And they said, no, 
you know, our stands, surgeries and, and medicines are much more effective, in other words, much more cost effective. And at that point in time, they told her to cease and desist or she'd have to leave. So she actually said, then I would have to leave because ethically and morally, I cannot not offer what these products are first because they have no side effects. And at that point in time, the hospital negotiated and they eventually um, said okay and she then for the last several years have been using the technologies in her practice. But she had to fight the battle to do it. Um, but we just got a call today and she's going full time in Nikon because she said I can help more people go using these technologies um, being full time in this and the same time I can be a mother to my son and a wife to my husband. So um, really, really powerful that we're able to affect change in that way. And she's actually very, very excited because she's going to actually get to do